So Ian, welcome to Lank Studio. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing today and what's going on. Yeah, it's great to be back at Emirates Old Trafford. We're hosting our Design and Development Summit, our international yep. meeting of projects uh, from around the world. And these are uh, stadium arenas, sports and entertainment venue projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of the perfect match, really, yeah. bringing them to a venue that's developed and grown, built yeah. new facilities, expanded over time with an audience of projects from all around the world who are yeah. going to be doing the same thing. We're underway doing that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And how, how many years has it been running now for? The Design and Development Summit is uh, 10 years this yeah. year. We're our Brilliant. 10th birthday edition. And We've all had little badges. I've yeah, not got mine been, on today. I am 10. They've been behaving like they were 10. It's great. <laughs> last, night, last night at the bar with the, yeah. with the match on. Yeah. Um, and how's I'm, it all gone then? What, what kind of stuff's been happening? I mean, this is the first time we've actually hosted this meeting in person since November 19. Yeah. And it cast your mind back then. It was a very different world, very yeah. different uh, political climate, very different economy. Yeah. Um, so actually great to get everybody back in person. We've done an online edition and then we merged it with a, another event in 21. So to have its own identity again, its own community. And this is an international group of architects, venue owners, operators, teams, clubs like yourself here, um, looking at the future of, of venue design and operations and bringing them together in your point building yeah. is fantastic. Because I think, you know, that's, that's an asset so few teams clubs have yeah the it tends to get engineered out the desire to sort of build more and more seats and more and more sort of match day positions and then the other 300 days of the year what are we doing with our venue and yeah. uh, i think this was one of the visionary aspects really at emirates old trafford that has transformed the club from yeah. where it was when i first came uh well 12 years ago uh the point was the reason that we came it was this big box that we could brand as an outside event organizer yeah put our own experience into it, evolve into that space and plenty of capacity. And you've got daylight and it's got freight lifts. It's all set up for us and yeah. made really easy. And it's amazing being over there and speaking to some of the delegates that you've got that have obviously experienced so many different venues and stadiums. And it, it's great to get their feedback in terms of what the venue is like and how amazing the point is in terms of this kind of blank canvas of space that you know you can deliver almost anything in. Um, so that's positive for us to hear from a venue perspective as well, that they're coming and enjoying the experience. Um, and you touched on kind of the point and how you're using the venue. So obviously we have the point that you can see in the background, the pavilion, the hotel. How, how do you use that to make sure that there's this delivery of an, an amazing event here? So, you, you, I mean, we're bringing guests from all over the world. Mm -hmm. together we only have two days with them and during that time we want to foster as many contacts and connections as possible yeah. and i guess the historic model was you go and rent a, a convention center yeah. outside of town in one place and try and get a couple of official hotels and hope everybody meets each other quite and stressful here, <laughs> well you you get a you get a, a dilution of the event experience because yeah. people are in taxis they're traveling to and from the mm -hmm. hotel they've left their bags they're going here and there and actually the idea of putting the whole event ecosystem, so mm -hmm. the speakers, the sponsors, the, the exhibition, with staying on site, with the networking reception, with the welcome party. And last night we had the awards in the point as well. Yeah. Live screening of the football match. It, it's kept everybody together. And I think our, our sponsors, our partners appreciate that chance to have more yeah. touch points, more time with, mm -hmm. with the prospective clients. Um, and, you know, uh, the visitors from overseas, are, it, as I said, they haven't caught up together for, for three years and really putting them all together. It's like a big family reunion. Yeah. And they're not spread across the city so trying to some, find each other. Yeah. So in some sense, a really efficient kind of yeah. use of time, maximizing the time that people have we, got all together. We you know, we go out with an early bird offer saying, you know, book now. We'll include yeah. your hotel nights. And it means less travel, less cost, more time at the event, more time networking. Yeah. Stay on site. And, uh, you know, the hotel has been part of that evolution here. That's allowed us to to grow the event yeah and you've got another one underway we have indeed i'm going to come to that but what, one of the things i wanted to talk to you about um and you've been here for a, a long time now which is fantastic we love having you here and um in terms of kind of the staff and how you develop relationships with the staff over the years can you talk to me a little bit about that um yeah i've said our event is like a, a, a family reunion in, in some ways yeah. Coming back to Emirates <laughs> yeah. Old Trafford is another family reunion. Yeah. yeah. It's, the Australian, it's the event family. And 
Yeah, we've got familiar faces there who uh, are, are on the event yeah. side, on the ops. Um, you know, there's the exec team. That's great. And there's mm -hmm. people you know you're working with to deliver the event. Uh, they know us. They know what we yeah. like. Uh, and I think that's the good thing. I think that's the thing that we've learned over time. We've learned what makes you tick, you know, what the event is all about, what you need. Um, and I think, you know, we talked a little bit before about how you as event organisers have challenged us as well in terms of developing that product. So um, do you feel that way as well, I guess? No, absolutely. I, we, yeah, you've got, you. I think when you rent a space, you don't know who's coming in. Yeah. It's kind of the Airbnb model. What are these guests going to be like? Are they are they <laughs> yeah. highly demanding? Are they going to wreck my <laughs> wreck my home? Or are they going to leave in a good stead? Um, are they going to be like Japanese football fans who clear up the stadium after they've watched <laughs> yeah. the match? Who, who are these people? So we've been coming back. Um, your teams listen to us. We've we've um, and not you know every event has a different footprint. We're a B two B meeting of international sports and entertainment execs, so they're coming from sports and entertainment venues. They're expecting to see the best of yeah. of operations here. So there's an expectation on their side, and we're pushing that onto you yeah. as a venue, saying, "Hey, you need your A game here because these are people yeah. doing the same business as you in different mm. cities." And I uh, think that's great for us, you know, because it pushes us, it challenges us, it allows us to create. A product I guess that we can deliver in the future as well so yeah thank you to you guys as well well thanks for responding <laughs> and, and the event model has evolved we we saw what you did during the international uh, cricket cricket yep. world cup here using the point as a, a social hospitality space rather than a yeah. formal yeah dining with linen it was more of a sort of networking business hub meet yeah, and we, it, works we, really we, effectively. it does and we take that bit and put that in the model we call that the marketplace it's mm -hmm. our networking lounge it's where all the coffees and teas and lunches are served and then we've got our stages either end and it just means again compact footprint it's sufficient it just yeah. means we can get everybody meeting shaking hands uh, yeah. i mean the business meeting here. yeah it's about opening doors to business and if you make it easier for people they they appreciate it and you guys make it easy here Great. Um, so new development obviously happening behind us as we speak. Um, you have got a hard hat tour if people do want to go up in the cold, blustery Manchester weather later. Um, how do you feel that that will enhance the experience for your delegates coming through next year uh, at the back end of the year? Uh, it, it's certainly going to help us. I mean, yeah. at the moment we, we, we fill the existing Hilton Garden in and we're then using overflow properties around Manchester within easy reach but having another 150 180 guests on site yeah. again that's fantastic for us it's yeah. the compact footprint and it makes it easier to extend the event you know from a one two-day event maybe to a three-day event and, yeah. and and to make better use of that yeah and yeah. use of the new restaurant so we're hoping that will have a completely different look and feel as well so I think that will be another element that that can be used by you guys as well which will be fantastic well again yeah extending that that uh, networking reception getting people yeah uh, to stay longer spend more time networking spend it's more great money. <laughs> spend, spend more money but I mean for the business conference world it, it is about how many connections can you make because yeah. our, our sponsors and partners you know hold us up and say who did I meet did I make connections did I open doors and the more opportunity you have for that and keeping yeah. everyone on site it's the same thing you've got the parking here you've got the great transport links you know the center of Manchester this this must visit city now you know Lonely Planet said it's it's the city of 2023 yeah, with three tram stops from the center and, and all the action then you come out here and you know there's the oasis of business yeah to, to focus on. Great. So one last question um, before we depart this lovely studio is around, um, obviously you, I guess, visit a lot of venues, a lot of stadiums, have a lot of connections with people that work in various places across the globe. What is it about uh, Emirates Old Trafford, I guess, that kind of makes us stand out? Oh, I'm going to sound like your best advocate, aren't I? <laughs> uh, I'm I, so. I, I, well, actually... <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I, I do travel around. I see a lot of stadiums. I have done for the past uh, 25, 30 years. Uh, been involved with builds and with operations. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of envious glances here when they come because, you know, there's a lot of our international guests have no idea about cricket and mm. no idea that facilities such as this yeah, I've had lots could, of interesting it, could exist. About cricket. And then they see the point and this, this blank space and thinking, wow, we need one of those. How can we fit it into a stadium? And invariably they get engineered out. As I say, yeah. they, they're looking for hospitality spaces under the seating rows. But you've got the box, you've got the hotels on site. Um, and 
yeah, joining that together has just made it very easy for us to grow, not just this event, other events in our portfolio yeah. here. Uh, you've got the draw of Manchester. You haven't got the costs of London. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great mix for us. Yeah. Well, may it continue.